Well, I'm delighted to have on the show uh, this time uh, Helen Wilkie, who's a fantastic author, who's going to talk us through how to uh, create books very easily. So hi there, Helen. Hello, Mark. Hi there. Uh, so one of the things that uh, that I've t- talked to a lot about with accountants is, is it's the importance of, of being an author. And I know that, Hel- Helen, you're a, you've recently written... Uh, this book here, Words, Words That Count, a guide for accountants for better business writing. And certainly I've, I've found from my own personal point of view that when, when I first wrote, started writing books, it's made a, a big difference on my own professional career. So some people might not know I wrote uh, Effective Pricing for Accountants, which hits number one spot. My latest book is uh, How to Build a Better Business. Uh, and... Other accountants I work with also creating great books. So here's one as an example. This is uh, Rob Walsh wrote The Business of Dentistry, and uh, that's been hugely successful for him. And I think there's there's two really important reasons why accountants absolutely must write a book. And when when I say that, they kind of panic and think, I can't write a book like, like Rob's, a great big hardback. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a long book. My first book... Practical Pricing for Accountants was just 30 pages long, and my second book, The Proactive Accountant, was 30 pages. So it doesn't have to be long. And, and Helen, I know you're going to talk us through the process, but let me just start off by, I think it's important to make it really clear, it, it is why accountants <coughs> should be writing a book. I, as I said, I think there's two strong reasons, but I'd be interested to hear your take on it, your reasons why, as accountants, we should have a book. Well, there's a certain mystique about being an author. And even in this day and age when people are consuming information in many different ways, and sometimes people will say, well, nobody reads books anymore. Everybody's on Kindle or, or they want ebooks. And it's true that you can get exactly the same information on an ebook or on a Kindle version, but there's something about an honest to God printed book that you can hold in your hand that somehow has a press prestige value that an ebook doesn't have. That that's got nothing to do with sense. It's got to do with emotions. And people just, I'm, I'm constant. well, I'm not surprised anymore, but I was for many years at how impressed people are when they realize that you're an author. And when you actually sign your book and give it to them, how pleased they are about it. And so if you as an accountant or any other kind of professional are an author as well, it just raises your reputation, your business value several notches right there. And I know that when I started, and I mean, I'm a, a, first and foremost, I'm a professional speaker. And I wrote my first book in 1993 because I quickly found that as a speaker, you're expected to write a book. Yeah. And as soon as I wrote and published my book, I put my fees up. And there was absolutely no question about getting them because you were an author. And so that's the same thing applies with accountants. But I know that in the accounting profession, quite often, and I'm assuming this is the same in the UK as it is here in Canada, quite often you'll start off by giving somebody a free consultation, somebody who might end up being your client. So supposing you're talking about an area of of your expertise and the person's asking you questions and you're answering them, what if you could say at the end of it, As a matter of fact, I've written a book on that subject. Would you like me to send you a copy? That changes the entire conversation. It does, exactly. And I love the point you made about when you give somebody a signed copy, it makes them feel really special. I noticed that was one of the things you did. You sent me a a signed copy of your book, which is so thank you so much for that. Uh, Certainly, I think I I agree with what you said there. I I think uh, one of the real big reasons for writing a book is it establishes your credibility it establishes the credible expert so if i just go back to uh, rob walsh for example who wrote the business of dentistry rob is a, an account one of the most successful accountants in the uk as a sole practitioner and uh, no surprise he specializes in dentists and right. his book is effectively his business card but it's far more powerful than a business oh, card. Yeah. yeah i call it my five dollar business card I mean, I do sell it. My book actually does quite well on Amazon. And uh, as a speaker, of course, I I wanted to sell it at the back of the room when I spoke at conferences, and it does well there too. But I never expected to make a fortune out of of actually selling the book. And in fact, I haven't. But 
giving it away as an introduction to somebody, that brings me a tremendous amount of business. Yeah, and that's a really interesting point you make there, because I, I would suggest that the reason for writing a book is not to make money, unless you're going to write a fictional book. But for an accountant writing a, a, a factual book about their expertise, the, the objective isn't to make money. Uh, not from the book itself, no. no. No, if you make some, it's great. If you cover the printing costs, that's that's great. Uh, but but to me, the, the the first reason is demonstrating that you are the credible expert, and the other one is to generate sales leads. Uh, oh yes. By by using lead pages to give the book away in return for contact details. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we, I'm going to ask you in a little while to to talk through. Um, a, 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 the process for how accountants can write a book because sometimes it's, it sounds daunting but I, I know yes. you're going to take away the mystique from that but <laughs> before you do that I just love to know a little bit more about you because I know you I know you're you're all the way over in Canada and I'm in the UK uh, but I'd like to just know a bit more about your background because I know you weren't born in Canada and your accent no. kind of gives that away as well so if you just give us a little bit of background about you and also how you got into writing all right. Well, yes, I was born in Scotland, and I've been in Canada for many years. But my, I feel my accent is a social advantage, so I've never done anything to 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 soften it at all. Although my, when I go back to Scotland on vacation, my family says I talk funny. <laughs> But I have been a professional speaker since 1993, and I speak in the area of communication in the workplace, and that includes all kinds of communication, but with a focus on the written word. And I've worked with lawyers and uh, different kinds of, well, really all kinds of people across the workplace. But over recent years, I seem to have developed a specialty in working with accounting firms. And that started with working with them on their writing skills. So I wrote the book, Make Your Words Count, in response to an express need by my clients because I go into accounting firms and teach their accountants how to write well. And in every, not books, just in an everyday um, situation as part of their work. They're numbers people. They're not word people naturally. And so I go in to work with them on that. And then the other side of my business, the writing division, as I call it, is just that. I'm a marketing specialist and copywriter. And again, I'm specializing within professional services firms, including accountants, helping them with such things as writing their websites and all the peripherals that go with that, like email marketing and autoresponder series and white papers and all those things that help them to use the internet to market their businesses. Mm, great, because words, after all, words are really, really important. The words can make such a Absolutely. difference. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I say to accountants quite often, and I'll say the same thing to lawyers, you know, you could be engaged, let's say as an accountant, you could be engaged to work with a client for three months on an audit or engagement or a consulting engagement or anything else, but at the end of the day, the only thing that's left that's tangible is your written report. So you want it to represent you well. And not only that, at some point the client is going to want some advice. They're going to want to know what they're supposed to do. And if they read your report and they have no idea what it means or what they're supposed to do, then you haven't served the client. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh and I, not, I did notice that on your blog, your, your latest blog is actually about some of the mistakes that people make with, with writing proposal letters. Uh, yes. So before we get on, I'm just going to talk about books and how you write a book, but um, looking at um, uh, writing skills, communication skills, yes. what, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see professionals and accountants make when they're writing, for example, proposal letters and, uh, and so on? I would say that the number one mistake that professionals of all kinds make is overuse, inappropriate use of jargon. 
And everybody does this because people don't realize they have jargon because they're so used to it. I mean, we use jargon because it's a, a useful way of communicating with other people who use the same jargon. But we need to leave it behind when we step outside that group, either to speak or to write. And I have been baffled many times by people's write, written messages and even in presentations. I mean, I have a, pro a program now called Simplify the, the Complex because people go up and I mean imagine if you're going out by yourself or with a team member to do a presentation a pitch for new business if you go out and your competitor goes out and your competitor comes out and baffles them with jargon and throws up charts that are incomprehensible and then you come along and just say it in straightforward plain English so that the people know what they're going to get even if you're charging the same fee and even if it is exactly the same business, you're more likely to get it just because they understood what you were talking about. So jargon is a huge barrier to communication. Agreed. The other thing is just too many words. People use way too many words in the written correspondence and, and you have to wade through it to get to the nugget of the, of the message, you cut away. I always say the Helen Wilkie philosophy of, of editing is slash and burn. There's an old story, I don't know whether it's true or not, of Michelangelo when somebody is supposed to have asked him, how do you make those beautiful angels out of a block of cold marble? And Michelangelo is reputed to have said, I just chip away anything that's not angel and the angel emerges. <laughs> and that's how I think of editing. Okay, great story like that. <laughs> okay, so hopefully now the accountants that are watching this are now recognizing, yes, they need to write a book. So what would you suggest to them is the, the, the best sort of book they should write? Well, I think first of all, they should understand that they don't need to write the seminal book on their subject. And that's one of the things that, that scares people away because they think they have to write a huge book and tell, tell, tell everything they know about the subject. That is not necessary and it's also not desirable. People are not so much looking for those huge books anymore today unless they're in university or something. But in business purposes, what I say to my accounting clients, for example, here in, in Toronto, is if I were a business and I was thinking of opening up a branch plant in Buffalo, New York, and I'm wondering how is that going to affect my tax, that's all I want to know. I don't want to know everything that's in the Income Tax Act. I just want to know that. And so I recommend that people take a thin slice that's just purely one area of expertise. You know, if you're a tax accountant, then even that's too wide. You need to bring it in, make it narrow, so that people will get the answers to the questions that they want instead of having to wade through it looking for more information that they don't want. So it should be a small book it should be focused and it should answer questions that your clients or potential clients are likely to ask. That's a, that's a great point. And when you think of some of the most successful business books, books like Who Moved My Cheese, The One Minute Manager series, they're mm -hmm. all books that you can read in just a few hours. Uh, uh, Absolutely. One of the books that I wrote is called The Hidden Profit Center and it's it's one of those business fables and I wrote it so that somebody could read it on a transatlantic flight. Yeah, yeah. So so for the for the accountants, they, they mustn't get hung up on thinking I've got to write something, you know, everything I know about whatever it is, tax and so on. Keep it really focused to the point. And a book of just uh, a book of a hundred pages or even less can be can still be mm -hmm. really powerful. And it should be written in language that that non accountants can understand. That is hugely important. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So they've they've made the decision to to to, to write a book. Then, um, what's the step by step process? If you could talk us through the process that's, that that perhaps you go through or that the accountant can go through to create that book, what would it be? Well, I'll tell you what the process is that I'm suggesting to people, and then I, if you if you will, I'll go on to talk about my program to help people do that. Right. So the principle behind this is many people, they don't write the book because they're overwhelmed by the idea, but they also think, I don't know how to write a book. 
And frankly, in some cases, they're right. They don't know how to write a book. They don't have, to have that kind of writing skills, and they're going to need some help. But that shouldn't stop them from going ahead with it using this process. So people think, I don't have time, I don't know what to write about, I, don't, I can't do this, and I don't know how to publish the book. What I say to you is, imagine instead, suppose you've decided what you want to write your book about. Imagine that you're out on the golf course or in the local coffee shop with a friend. Not necessarily a client, but just with somebody who's not an accountant. And that person asks you, those questions. You would have absolutely no problem answering it, right? You would just say, oh yes, that's, and, and you would tell them the explanation and give them the information they're looking for. And that's how you would want to write the book. I'm suggesting that you talk your book. You don't write it, you talk it. And the process is, first of all, get your questions together. Decide what are the questions about 10 questions can make a, a decent sized book. So put together the questions that people normally ask you. And then just start by, by doing this without recording it or anything. Just practice in your living room. Ask the question or have somebody else ask you the question and answer it. And once you've done that a few times, then you want to record it. So. I mean, computers today, everybody's computer has a built-in recording system. So ask your question and record it. And, once you, and don't write out your script in advance because that defeats the purpose. Just speak the book. And then what you do after that is you have your, your recording transcribed. And then after that, that's when the work comes in that really needs to be done. And if you possibly can do this yourself, but more likely you're going to need some help from an editor because it has to be translated from the spoken word to the written word. Even though it's going to be casual and it's going to be written in everyday language, it still needs to come out in the written word. And of course you have to get rid of all the ums and the ahs and the repetition and that type of thing. Um, so that is important. So you need to get that done. But now what you've got is the content of your book. The answers to the questions make the content of the book. And then after that, you just have to do things like put in about the author and your information. And there's lots of people that will design, do a simple design for a book. You don't have to go looking at high quality design. This is another reason that people don't write books is the perceived length of time that it takes. And I will tell you, I, two, I've written six books and two of them were published by publishing companies because of the circumstances they came to me. The rest are self-published. And the first one that I wrote, I decided to self-publish because speaking to people in the traditional publishing world, I realized it was going to be about two years before this book was ready. And I wanted to sell it now <laughs> at conferences. So this, doing it this way is even faster than just traditional self-publishing, if you will, because you don't have to sit down and write it. So you're going to go with a fairly simple but decent looking um, cover, and there's all kinds of people online that are prepared to do that for you for a fairly inexpensive price. And then you get it printed and you've got your book. That's basically the process that I advocate that people do. Now, you can do this yourself. I mean, a person could just go away from listening to this and write down the steps one, two, three, and do it themselves. But they still get stuck. And so sometimes, with the best will in the world, the book still doesn't get written. And so there's still the frustration. And that is why I came out with this program that I offer, and it's called The 90-Minute Author. And, and that's absolutely true. If you want to be a 90-minute author, that's pretty much your time investment. A little bit after that, but not so much. So if you wish, I can go ahead now and tell you about the process, the 90-minute author program. Well, I definitely would like you to, uh, but just uh, before we touch on that, okay. um, just, to, just to kind of pick up on what you've said, really, um, everything you've said made, makes perfect sense. And... And I certainly agree, I'll be fascinated to find out about your particular program, um, but I, I, I certainly agree that when you have the right processes in place and you know how to do it, creating a book doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, and when I did, uh, for example, uh, how to build a better business and make more uh, money recently, uh, 
writing the book was was pretty straightforward and and then finishing the book it's about just knowing who to go to so you need a typesetter who will go through and uh, and lay it out nicely and you can find them relatively inexpensively uh, i chose to use an editor as well uh, and that for a few hundred quid someone went through it and edited it and, and then i paid a, a little bit for someone to do the the, the proofreading so they're they're the key three stages you need get someone yes. to to edit it get someone to proofread it and those by the way are two different uh, different functions. things yeah because the editors the editors not looking for grammatical errors they're looking at it to make sure it reads clearly um, mm -hmm. So I would certainly recommend that if you're going to the lengths of wanting to create a really good quality book, it, it's worth engaging the editor. Um, but I was fascinated by your process as well about talking about the, 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 the easiest way to write the book in the first place is not to start the blank sheet of paper, but just to record. Uh, and I certainly agree with that. And so I thought, let me just share um, one of the books I wrote was The Proactive Accountant, which is this is a this this one did take me i think two three hours at the most and the process i went through is a 30 page book it talks through a step-by-step -step process the accountants can go through to be systematically proactive with every client and basically mm -hmm. it's uh, it's written by myself and my, my my business partner steve pipe and basically we took with a, a 30 minute video uh, where Steve was presenting to a room full of accountants and talking through how to be proactive. So I took mm -hmm. the 30-minute video, I sent it off to be transcribed, and to get the audio transcribed is only, it's less than £100. I think it cost about £50 to get the whole thing transcribed. Yes, better. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from that, the, the, my time investment was the two to three hours to do the, I chose to edit that particular one, and it was just editing, mm -hmm. as, as exactly as you said, take the years nums out, put some subheadings in, lay it out, because the, the, the transcription will just be a solid block of text, so you need to break it up yes. in paragraphs and so on. And you might be horrified at what you actually said, you know, the number of ums and ahs and I guess and all those sort of fillers. You're surprised at how much you do that. But everybody does. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but some transcribers will take those out anyway. The one that we use takes mm -hmm. the ears nums out, so you, you don't even mm -hmm. have to edit those out yourself. They're already, already, already done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... So that's uh, it's, it's fascinating to hear your thoughts on the process. And, and, and yes, I'd love to know about this 90-minute author program. So, Helen, if you could just tell me how that works. Yes, the way that works is once you've decided to, to go ahead and be a 90-minute author, my first request to you will be to come up with your 10 questions. Now, some people find it a little difficult to come up with 10. But if you come up with, you know, six or seven, I can help you to, to fill in the rest and so that you actually start with ten questions. Because I'm from the outside, so I can ask the questions as a business person to help you to fill out the ten. So we start with your ten questions. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go through the questions and have a good feel for what you're going to say. And I do not recommend that you start to try and write anything out because that's a block right there. You're going to put up a wall in your own way. So don't do that. You write down some key words if you want to, just to remind yourself what you're going to say. But basically, you're just going to answer the question. So once that's all in place, we set a date and we do an interview. Now, we can do it over Skype and have a similar setup to what we're doing here, or it can be just a telephone conversation, whatever, whichever way you prefer it as the client. I'm calling you the author at this stage. So we set up a date and we have the interview and it takes 90 minutes. And in that time, I found that 90 minutes is enough time for a person to answer 10 questions on their area of expertise. So I ask you the questions and you answer them. Now also, because I am not an accountant or I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an architect, I can ask this, what you might, what we might call the stupid questions because they're not stupid to me. I don't know the answers. So even in the course of the conversation, sometimes an explanation will come up that you may not have thought of if you were just going to sit down and write the book. So we have this conversation and then at the end of that, your work is almost done at this point. So you can go back and get on with your business. So I take the, the audio and I have it transcribed. And then what I do at that point is I edit it. And now this is not substantive editing that you might get if you went, to, you know, you're writing a big book and you went to an editor and they would do things like change the order and, and ask for more fill-in information. It's, it's not that process. It's more cleaning up. 
and translation. So it's cleaning up the, the you know any grammatical mistakes and converting it from the written word as from the spoken word to the written word and also looking at the level of jargon. Now that can sometimes be weeded out in the conversation because if you say something that I don't understand, I will say to you, what does that mean? So make sure that we, you know, it, it, when I was writing my last book, I had a very nice conversation with a tax accountant who was helping me to make sure that my examples that I gave were correct in terms of the, the information. And we, at one point in the conversation, he'd introduced another piece to, to the letter which was an advice letter to a client. And I said to him, but, but I don't think that that applies in this woman's situation. And he said, well, no, it doesn't. I said, well, why are you telling her then? Because I would assume that if my accountant is telling me this, it means it applies to me. So sometimes we, as professionals, we have, an account, we have a, a tendency to put in information that's not apropos of the subject. So I will also help with that. So when I've edited it, I now send it back to you. You have one opportunity to go through it again, make sure that I haven't thrown out the baby with the bathwater, or I haven't changed something so that it's not the way you want it. And you might want to add some things at that point. So then you send it back to me, and now you really are done. And so the rest is, I will take care of it. So now we move into, I work with people to do the layout and the um, you know, the design and the layout of the book, the typesetting, as you say, and also the design. And then I have it printed. And so at the end of the process, now, in North America, I say to people, as long as you do your part, it will take about a month. That's all. If we're talking about the UK, which is the case with your people, um, I add a couple of weeks to that, just, for, just because of the distance. But it should be done in six to eight weeks if you do your part and get back to me with the information on the time that it's needed. And then at the end of it, this is a package. So you get not only the actual interview and the process, but what you get is two things. A PDF file of the complete finished book designed with the cover and all the rest of it, which as you know, you can use for many, many purposes. Yeah. But you also get a hundred copies of a real, honest to God, printed book with you as the author. And you get all this within that period of approximately six weeks. Wow, that's an awesome process. Uh, and and I'd certainly, uh, yes, it can take as little as, as, as a six to eight weeks when you, when you understand the process and have a structure, which obviously you've developed. Uh, one, of the, mm -hmm. one of the points you made there, which I thought was a really important point, it, it, and where you add value is the fact that you you get them to clarify when they start using jargon. Because as you said right at the outset of this interview, it's really important when you communicate, communication skills is to avoid jargon. And if you're a technician, an accountant, or if a lawyer, and you start writing about your chosen subject, it's so easy to slip into the jargon. And, and then yes. you lose your audience when they read it. Right, you do. and and. If you're doing, in, even in business correspondence, it's easy to do that. And I say to people, you know, at least define the terms at the beginning. The first time you use an acronym, say it out in full and then say, well, we call that whatever the acronym is, so that people at least know what it is that they're reading for the rest of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my view is that if, if an accountant can get a, a high quality book done in just 90 minutes, to me that's a complete no-brainer and every single accountant should have their own book. I guess the one thing that some accountants, being you know, very cost conscious, might, might then say is, yeah, but that's going to cost a lot of money to create a book. Uh, but my view to that would be is you, you look at someone like Rob's book, The Business of Dentistry, and this book is it's far more valuable than just a brochure because it's, it's going to last if it's your book it should last you the rest of your professional life. It can sit at the heart. If you're a dentist, if you're a dentist, why would you go to another accountant? Exactly. When you see the book written by this person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for Rob, he picks up dozens of clients because he, even mm -hmm. if he's in a beauty parade, he can demonstrate that he is the expert. So he Absolutely. gets he gets more business, and he can charge higher prices, which is the point you made right at the outset yeah. when you wrote your book. So. Absolutely. It, it, it shouldn't be about the cost of, uh, of creating a book. It should be thinking about, oh, this is, this is going to be at the heart of my branding, my marketing for the rest of my professional life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that's been fascinating. I've really, really enjoyed that. And it's been great to hear about your step-by-step -step process. I've certainly learned a huge amount. And I hope everybody else uh, watching this has learned a huge amount. So uh, the last thing they might be thinking is, well, how can they get in contact with you? How can they find out more about your 90-minute author program? How can uh, they, they read your book? And what I'll do is I'll make sure that below this video, we'll put all, put all of the links so that people can get, get hold of you and uh, get access to your book and your program. Okay, and the link that you will put up there, I should just tell people, and I can tell people the numbers right now because some people will be thinking, oh, this is going to cost a fortune, and it truly isn't. Uh, if you wanted, I mean, some people have looked into the possibility of using ghostwriters, and that is very expensive, and it's also a lengthy process because they have to learn about you before they can actually write the book. But the link that, I, that you'll be providing is a link to a special page on my website. My website is helenwilkie.com, and there is a 90-minute author page on there. But your link will take you to a special page that and you'll see right at the top of it in blue letters, it says Special Offer for Friends of Mark Wickersham. Wow. And the special offer there is the book um, this whole process, the 90-minute author process, normally costs the Canadian equivalent of about £3,800, which in itself is a huge deal. As you, and you know, because you've written books and you know how expensive the whole everything can be. So £3,800 is, is really a good deal. But for your friends of Mark Wickersham, I am offering the special price of £3,500. So there's a saving of £300 on an already valuable deal. Wow. And I hope that your, your people will uh, take advantage of that. That's awesome, Helen. Thank you so much for spending your time going through your process. I've learned huge amounts and uh, I look forward to speaking to you sometime again soon. And uh, I think I'll just leave to say goodbye. So thank you so much once again. Thank you for having me, Mark. It's been my pleasure. Mine as well. Bye bye. Okay, bye.